Hey there, everybody. Okay. First off, to get everything started. You guys got to see my garden. Because I'm just so proud of it. See here. This. My cucumbers are growing. And my jalapeno is doing good. And my parsley is doing good. And spinach is well on its way. And if you see, I've got lettuce growing right there and some mescaline. It's really doing good. Like, it's isn't it? But then the yellow crookneck squash, it popped this morning. And the little scallop squash popped the other day. My watermelons are not as good. Or my strawberries. But, yeah, my mint and my... Sage and thyme, they're all doing absolutely fantastic. So, garden's doing good. Garden's doing really, really good. Oh, yeah, and then my tomatoes. You gotta see my tomatoes. See? And my tomatoes. Yeah, so, there's my garden. How does your garden grow? Mine's growing pretty dang good right now. I'm excited because... Nothing like when I was growing up, a little girl, I grew up on a big plot of land out in Northern California, north of Sacramento, just outside of the town called Chico in Northern California. And I grew up, the population of where I grew up was maybe like a hundred people if you took in all the farmers and all the areas. And so I grew up with a rice, not rice, a wheat field across the way from me, an orange grove behind me, and down the road, peaches and apples, you know, and all my property. My, my mom and dad, they had probably a third to a quarter of our land was garden. And so we had plum trees and, and apple trees and apricot trees and cherry trees. Oh my God, love the cherry trees. Cherry trees and a big, big mulberry tree that I loved to climb as a little girl. And then my daddy, he had a whole humongous line of, and then this other great big line in the middle, just outside our back door where there were cucumbers and squash and peas and green beans and you name it, everything was growing there. So I grew up drinking out of the water hose and I would just grab something off of a tree and kind of just rub it off on my clothes or rinse it off with the hose, you know, and grab some peas, grab some tomatoes, what have you, and just keep going, just keep going. So I didn't go to school until third grade. I was homeschooled till third grade. This is like how did Kendall get her start? Well, here you go. Here's Kendall's young life. <laughs> so yeah, so I didn't go to school till third grade. And I was back, back in the days when homeschool was not a thing. My parents actually um, went and talked to superintendent of schools in Sacramento, California. And I'll never forget that day because my dad, he wanted what he wanted and he did not want me going to school. He did not want me to be, you know, influenced by all the other children and everything. So I remember sitting out in the hallway of of the superintendent office in Sacramento, California, and hearing my father's fist come down on the superintendent's desk. And I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified because I heard him going, bam, bam, like that. And I was like, oh my God, what is, I, I thought that my dad was going to kill the superintendent of schools. You know, here I was, this, I think I was like maybe six years old, five, five, five years old, something like that. And and then all of a sudden they came out and they said, what, hey, you know, um, they're going to go ahead and we're going to, they're going to let us homeschool you. We get to have our own school, but we want you to name the school. So I, they said, what, what do you want to name the school? And, and I said, Valentine. <laughs> I wanted it to be called Valentine School. So my I was schooled until third grade at Valentine School, which was also known as my backyard, my living room, my bedroom, my kitchen, um, camping, wherever wherever my parents deemed it to be. And I did not get to socialize with other children, those you know nasty little kids. And I just got to witness them from my treehouse playing basketball and stuff. It's kind of sad, actually. You know, if you can picture a little girl, I grew up as an only child, and uh, just watching the kids play and everything recess. And I was just, I would sit up there in my treehouse and watch them, and I was like, mm, poor me, poor me. So yeah. 
So how does my garden grow? My garden grows much like my parents' garden grew and it's plentiful. It is definitely, I did learn how to grow. I did learn a few little tips and tricks on gardening, on hunting, on camping, on cooking, on all that good stuff. So, all right, enough of that. And no hair dilemma today, outside of the fact that the water was trying to wash out my deep conditioning stuff uh, this morning. And if you've read, had the opportunity to read my article from today, which is talking about my morning shower of shaving my thigh, when all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the thought came to me. All of a sudden, the thought came to me as to why I have n I'm not allowing myself to fully surrender to love. It's just kind of funny, right? Because what I, even as a little girl, what was what did I? What was my focus? What do you want to name your school? Oh, Valentine School, the school of the heart, the school of love, and you know, um, then then here I am, a grown ass woman, and you know wanting, of course, to be loved, to love, to be penetrated with love, to love deeply, to surrender to love, to experience all of this, and have experienced the magnitude that love definitely can bring with it, and how it can just freaking blow us wide open into the cosmos, and really truly touch the big toe of God. You know, I've had those orgasms where I was bawling my eyes out in the middle of just this absolutely mind-blowing experience and feeling as though my lover was penetrating me at this deep level where we, our bodies no longer existed. We were just one and feeling as though it was going to be for a lifetime, that this love was going to be for a lifetime and, and never thinking that it could ever, ever end that it can ever end. And one day, on a very, very sad, sad winter day, a few years back, that particular love did come to a close, the relationship did. Um, you know, I, it was a painful, painful situation. I, I did actually have an article out around that, about that the day the earth stood still, because that's what it felt like. When, when we broke, it felt like the earth was standing still for me and I felt like my whole world was coming to an end and I didn't I didn't know where I I existed anymore so it took a while to come out of that and in the midst of that I made this commitment um, as as we were in the midst of our separation I, I messaged this man and I, I messaged him and I told him I said I commit I commit to never love again and I was, I'll never forget, I was sitting on my couch and I'm bawling my eyes out and I text this to him because we were texting back and forth and I was calling him out on some stuff and, and you know, and we were just going back and forth and my heart was just shattering. It was just shattering. And I sat there and then I said that to him. I said, I, you know what? I commit to never, ever love again, to never surrender to love again, to never trust again, to never go to this level. This is this is too much. It's too painful. This is I, I I'd sooner die than experience this before. Now that was all my pain. That was all my suffering. That was that was everything that was you know happening to me internally at that moment. I was breaking and I really was shattering. I've come to realize over the course of the last few years that that shattering what well, had to happen. It absolutely had to happen because in our shattering we expand in our shattering we get to experience our depths we get to experience our darkness and until we allow ourselves to experience those darker aspects of self and those shadow lands and our depths and really go there and we don't really truly know ourselves and you know when we don't really know ourselves then we can't really be in integrity because we're not going to be in integrity with ourselves unless we allow ourselves to experience the depths right those are scary motherfuckers, aren't they? Like we just don't want to, we really don't really want to experience that. It hurts. It hurts and it's scary. But when we allow ourselves to really step into that depth and really truly experience it, we allow ourselves to expand. We allow ourselves to experience who we really are, what our really our desires are and everything. And we can birth so much from that. That is where we can really manifest some amazing stuff. Okay. So what I realized this morning as I was shaving was that I had made this commitment and emotion when we are have a passion run through us. Now passion, remember passion, when I say passion, a lot of the times when we when we hear the word passion 
passion nets, like it's awesome, right? Like this is really strong and powerful, passionate love making, passionate, you know, excitement, passionate creativity, passionate turn on, passionate love. That all sounds really great. We can be passionately painful. We can be passionate about our suffering. Passion is not, it's just a descriptive word to enhance whatever we're saying. Okay. So it puts kind of like the exclamation point on whatever that is. And so passion, it's, it expands the emotion of what we are feeling. So in this moment, when I made this commitment and a statement to this man, I said, I commit to never love again. I was very passionate in my suffering, in my pain. So my pain body was coming forward and it was speaking for me and it was saying, I'm committing to this. And it put up a wall and it set out soldiers and, a, you know, and, a, and it had alligators and dragons and you name it. Like I have it all going on there. I was like, I'm never going here. Never. Like this is, this is t strike two in the love, uh, in the love boat for me. Uh, like I have opened up at this deep level with two different individuals and I've gotten burned pretty hard both times. Like I was really just really in a lot of pain. So what I realized this morning is that that was holding me back because here I am, here I am a woman with countless men in her life that love her, that adore her. And you know, I, past lovers, current lovers, boyfriends, friends, uh, clients, all these different people and I have I, I know I can feel that love coming in and I happen to have manifested at the same point in time um, not long prior to the heartbreak I wrote in my journal I was very very avid and very very passionate about manifesting and I was manifesting exactly what I wanted and I had all this beauty manifesting in my life and now I had designed a lot of things around this particular individual as far as manifesting goes, you know, I had hooked my little, my little wagon up to him and I had created this amazing life around it. But I had put down this whole list of, of things that I really wanted in a man. And now I had, you know, wrote this down with this one person in mind, of course, right? And a few little changes and everything and never even realized over the last few years that I've managed to manifest this this ideal not only in the man that I currently am with and that yeah I feel his love consistently right but the other pieces have been coming in through me through life through friends through you know all these different resources so it's all kind of getting met and what I've realized over the course of the week is that man I'm a really good manifester on things and like when I'm really passionate and commit to something like that shit comes in and it comes in really good now I've known that I've known that but to this level I did not know it because what I didn't realize, what I didn't realize is I wasn't looking at the negative. I wasn't looking at the negative. I was focused on the pause. I was focused at, hey, look, you've manifested. You said that you want to make this much money and never want to settle for less than that. And look at that. You, you've managed to do that. You said that you wanted to have this kind of lifestyle and, and travel this much and have this kind of relationship with your children. And look, you've managed to do that. You said that you wanted your schedule to look like this and have this kind of clientele coming in, you know, and have people, this with like the, these strong motivated people that you want to work with. And that's what you want. And guess what? That's what I have. I have a beautiful group of people like that, right? I have amazing relationships with my children. I travel the way I want. I set my own schedule. My schedule is booked out the way I want it to be booked out. I don't have to worry about any of that. I pretty much have everything exactly what I want. And I did it all through commitment-based manifesting. Okay? It's through commitment-based manifesting and a passion attached to it. But what I didn't catch was that that could go against me too. And I could actually lock myself up around some of the, the juiciest, the most promising, the most beautiful life experiences because I committed I've committed to not having it. I committed in a state of pain to not allow myself to experience this anymore because that pain, that pain was too much. 
So that was the realization. That was the realization of this morning was that, you know, our commitments, they do, they really honestly make our reality. And we get to choose. That's the beautiful thing is that we have this beautiful thing called free will and we get to choose and we get to decide what we commit to and guess what? We can change our commitments, but we don't get to change our commitments until we realize that we've made them. So we have to look at some of the things that we have committed to, some of the ideas and programs and different things that have gone in our world and in our life, okay, and really analyze them and go, am I buying into this? Like, and this is what I'm believing? Why? Why am I believing this? Why is, is this still serving me? How is this serving me? You know, like, how is this really truly serving me? And much like in my shower, my shower experience this morning, my shower meditation of realizing that this doesn't serve me. Like, what the hell am I thinking here? Well, I wasn't thinking about it. That's the thing. I was not thinking about it. I didn't have the attention on it. And that's how problems come up, right? Like we go, oh, that problem came out of nowhere. No, the problem didn't come out of nowhere. The problem, it's been sitting there and it got rooted somewhere along the line in our thoughts and our hopes and our commitments and our beliefs and the things that we're buying into unconsciously and sometimes very consciously on the front side and it feels like it's like definitely the right thing that we want to do and then we find out, we get down that path just a little bit and we go, wow, this is really out of alignment with my heart's desire. This is really out of alignment with who I am. Like I did that, like that wasn't the smartest idea. And then we have to go and unhook it. We have to uncommit. We have to unravel the mess that we've gotten ourselves into. And that's where the real true work comes in, right? That's where we have to like go in. And now when you have tools and when you have certain, you know, you've built up your toolkit, you've built up your skills and everything, and you've done, you've, you're willing to go in there and deep dive into that shadow land and really get in there and do that kind of work, then you can really start to release things quickly. Like, I'm just showering, right? I'm showering. I'm shaving my leg. Not that big of a deal. And I have this aha breakthrough and I come out and I'm like, okay, well, hey, I know what's going on here. And I'm like, wow, like I can change this by the end of the day. I can change this by the end of the day. Like I can let go of that program right there by the end of the day. And what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm going to go and what am I going to replace it with? Right? What am I going to replace it with? I'm going to replace it with the things that I want that are in soul alignment. But when we don't do that work, when we're not willing to step in there, when we're not willing to look at the shadowland, when we're not willing to face those paper dragons known as our fears, right? Known as those fears to face our challenges and to go in there and go, no, I am going to tear this apart and I am going to do this kind of work and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to clean house. Well, if we're not willing to do that, then we, then we sit around and we just choose to disregard, ignore those belief structures, ignore those commitments that we've made. And guess what that gets us? Exactly what we've been having, right? Nothing changes. This is where we get our normalcy from. This is where we also get very safe and comfortable because it's sometimes we're comfortable in our pain. Sometimes we're comfortable in our challenge because if we changed it, well, that would be too different. And we don't know what life would be like if it was different. And that's kind of scary, isn't it? If you don't know what to expect from your life, if you don't know what to expect from yourself, if you don't even know who you are, well, the process of knowing who you are means to dive deep, to learn how to fall in love, to commit to your worthiness, to commit to loving yourself, to commit to seeing yourself and letting yourself be seen. Those kind of commitments, they serve you every single time, every single time those commitments serve you. So. Where are you at today on that? What are you willing to commit to, right? Just something to think about. Oh, yeah, and don't lick your phones. Don't lick your phones like me. All right, yeah, all right, here's, here's where you so Addison remembers this. I just put that on for a catchy little title around, around a conscious coffee here, but I should cover it with you. You know, hey, I showed you my garden already. Well, why did I put commit not to lick your phone? Well, number one, we're in the middle of a, of a crisis, a world crisis called COVID, right? Probably not the smartest thing to do is to lick your phone. But yeah, I did that the other day. Although I did have What did I have on it? It was like marshmallow gunk or something. It was like, it's not good. Sitting out here by the fire, roasting marshmallows, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I just got all this, oh man. And then there I am. And before I even know it, I'm like, 
<laughs> look at my phone by the fire and Addison's sitting there we were having a glass of wine and stuff and, and she's just like ew like that yeah. so don't lick your phone there's a commitment that will serve you commit to hygiene commit to keeping your phone clean you know even though I did lick my phone here's the reality I clean my phone two or three times a day so I I've read up on all the germs that your phone can carry with you not to mention I'm really not going any place so I'm not setting my phone down in any random toilet rooms or or anything like that you know I'm not running around putting it in shopping carts or anything my phone pretty much stays at home it's got a shorter leash than I do these days but yeah and there's there's one thing that you definitely I would recommend clean your phone and not with your tongue not with your tongue I mean unless you get marshmallow I mean, but isn't it amazing here's the thing the little phone thing licking my phone right what was that it was habit it was a thought that was it didn't even have I didn't even have a thought about it I had an experience that potentially could hurt me uh, in today's world right and I just went and I did what felt natural what was just like ah like that right in my panic I tried to solve a problem and it actually caused it could have potentially caused me harm now marshmallow on a phone versus the creation of a commitment may not seem like it's in the same in the same zip code right but it is it is because the same thing that got me to lick my phone is the exact same energy that got me to commit to never love again okay and it can be changed like that either one of them with this little thing called awareness that's all it is it's a little thing called awareness awareness witnessing you know opening up having having this awareness is exactly that consciousness and bringing a presence level to your life to your actions to your thoughts to your feelings and that's where you definitely have to get if you want if you truly truly want you're not just giving it lip service right if you truly want to thrive to have the life the love the money the health you know the relationships whatever it is that you're going for and you know in the midst of our struggle right now and all the pain and the suffering that a lot of people are going through then the resistance building to having abundance in love in in money in relationship in health because that's what we're doing is where a lot of people are resisting having what they proclaim they want because they're putting their attention on the fear and that's what gets us to commit to not having it unfortunately is fear fear prevents us from creating the life that we want fear prevents us from creating the relationships that we want so I encourage you today to look fear in the eye and literally go F you fear you know like that's not okay you're not serving me what is serving me is my soul is my heart listening to what feels good paying attention to what feels good and doing more of that acting from that place and yeah when it gets scared to recognize that that right there that's telling me that there's a, an argument going on between my ego and my soul okay that that's an argument that I'm caused there's some resistance there but I I get to choose I get to commit to my worthiness I get to commit to my love I get to commit to my growth I get to commit to my health to my sex to my relationships to whatever it is that you're wanting but you've got to make that commitment and you can go I commit you can say that you can say I commit but the true question comes down to do you mean it do you mean it do you mean that commitment or are you just giving it a little bit of lip service because oh that sounds like a good thing to do that sounds like something that I should do yeah I should commit to that yeah I should I should I should well those shoulds they don't take the pounds off they don't put the money in the bank they don't find you your soulmate they don't change your bad habits they don't you know they don't they don't move mountains should does not move mountains okay and the thought around oh I, I know I need to do that yeah well if you really truly know that you need to do it and if you really truly understand because here's the thing we already know what we need to do right we do each and every one of us knows exactly what we need to do for any challenge in our life 
we just go na 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 and ignore it. We cover our eyes and plug our ears and we ignore it because it's scary. Change is scary. Change, change is uncertain. We don't know what we're going to get over there. Can I really be that person? And at the end of the day, it all comes back to our worthiness. It all comes back to our understanding that we are worthy, that we were born worthy, that we were born to live a life of well-being, that we were born to have all that we want and not to be in the struggle and in the suffering. But that's scary, isn't it? To really step into those shoes? Can you imagine? Like that's really claiming something. That's, that's some cocky shit right there. Like to go, wow, so you think that you're worthy of, of all that money? You think that you're worthy of being loved like that? And having a love like that, you think that you're worthy of living that life, of having that job, of creating whatever that is that you're wanting to create? You think that you're worthy of that. Well, you are. You are worthy of that. Society may tell you otherwise. Your parents, your churches, government, you know, schools, friends, children, brothers, sisters. Yeah, they may all say differently. And they might all look at you and go, you're crazy for thinking that you can have that. But if, if you commit with passion, okay, with passion, not just lip service, then you can manifest it. You can make it happen. You can make it happen really quick, really, really quick. I know this for a fact. I do. Take it from this little girl who grew up out in the middle of nowhere, 600 foot square house without even with particle board for a floor in some places. Sometimes it was just cement in the house. The walls weren't finished. My parents, my parents were dead broke, dead broke, dead broke. I didn't know where things were coming from. And I went into my high school years working hard and being a big dreamer, but at the same time thinking that life had to be hard and then went into a marriage where I believed that things had to be hard, but I had a dream and it took me until I was in my thirties to understand my true power and understand that I was worthy of some things like love, like abundance, well-being, health, relationships, good relationships with everybody that I love and care for. Yeah. It took me till I was in my thirties to get to that. And as if overnight I transformed my whole world. And it was just because I decided to make the right commitments and to listen to my soul, to listen to my heart and to commit to what I was being guided with, not what I feared. So I want you to do the same. I encourage you to do the same because you deserve that life. You deserve that worthiness of everything, but you've got to believe it. You've got to believe it and own it, commit to it, and then step forward in faith. On that note, I know in the, in the comment section, you will see a link to the article that I was talking about the day the world stood still. Also check out the article that I wrote today about, you know, say it with me. Commitment means everything. Um, that article went out just a little bit ago, but on another note, just so you guys know, I have a couple specials running. That is, I have my consults right now for people who want to work one-on-one -on -one with me to do this intensive work. I'm doing a discounted special local people. I'm doing a six foot COVID walk around Arbor Hills park here in Plano to get out in this beautiful sunshine and enjoy an hour together to get to know each other, to do some of that work, some of that background work and get you started on this path of really creating the life that you want. If you're not local, the console special is still available, but unfortunately we won't be taking a walk together. I wish I could just jump on a plane and fly all over the place and walk with everybody, but I can't, but that is definitely coming and you know, it is definitely available. The other thing that I have going on is a four week mastermind. Now this is somebody that if you've wanted to work with me, but you can't afford me, if you're not quite ready for that deep dive, you don't have, you just want a good swift kick in the butt. Okay. You want to learn some is key practices to shift your world and you want some guidance over the next four to six weeks, well, this is definitely what you're looking for then, okay? Now, if you're wanting the deep dive, you do the full-on consult. You deep dive in there. You get in there. You tackle your challenges. You really transform your life. If you can't really do that, then you take on four weeks. You do a mastermind and what you do is you level up your life with seven keys, okay? Seven key elements that I'm going to be teaching over four weeks to you 
around whatever key component in your life that you're really wanting some shifting in, okay? So this is where we learned how to shift our shit. This is where we learned how to expand, how to grow with certain key elements, okay? Both of those details are in the comment section. If you have any questions on them, of course, just reach out to me, okay? And remember, you're worthy of that life that you want. You're worthy of everything. Stop existing, start living, say yes to yourself, commit to the most important thing on this planet. And that is your heart and soul. I love you guys. And I will catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee.